Hi, my name is Justin Chan. I'm a writer, director, producer, actor, and I'm currently in South Korea, but I live in Los Angeles. Um, I started acting in 2001, um, and I was in you know such films as Twilight, 21 and Over, Revenge of the Green Dragons, you know, and I've done television. About seven, eight years ago, I started to also direct. I started off with a film called Man Up, and then uh, I directed a film called Goop that went to Sundance and won the Next Audience Award. Um, I made a film called Miss Purple, and most recently, I made a film called uh, Blue Bayou that's gonna come out in theaters June 25th. I'm also in it alongside Alicia Vikander and it's about a Korean American adoptee that's getting deported. And I'm in Korea now shooting um, the book adaptation of uh, Pachinko. It's uh, going to be a television series for uh, Apple TV. So my acting career began in college. I was going to USC for business and after freshman year I did a summer internship in Silicon Valley and I just I just didn't enjoy it. So uh, I took a year off. You know, I studied abroad here in Korea for a little bit, and, and when I got back, I enrolled in a um, two-year Meisner acting program. And while I was still in USC, I started auditioning, and mostly for, at first for commercials. I did a lot of extra work in the beginning to get my SAG card. I um, did a lot of weird jobs. Um, I was catering food, I worked in like a, C-level agency filing headshots. Yeah, so I started from the very, very bottom. I think my strength was trying to figure out what I can offer uh, the industry. And to me, that was, I, I looked young. I could bring a little bit more depth as an Asian American to younger roles. So in the beginning, I'd started out with a lot of children's television, like Nickelodeon and Disney. And um, that was my in. But, the truth of the matter, I think, how I broke in was I was just unrelenting. I just would not take no for an answer. You know, I just worked 10 times harder, uh, prepared 10 times longer, so that I knew going into an audition that it wasn't because I didn't prepare. So I think that's what really helped set me apart was I would come in, basically every audition I knew, completely memorized, like as if I was shooting the movie or shooting the TV show and it was a final performance. It wasn't like a work in progress. But yeah, I think that's what got me started in getting credits. I felt as an actor, if I continued to act, it almost started to get a bit boring for me because I felt like I enjoyed the work, but I could see where the limit was. I always wanted to be like an Asian Sean Penn, but those opportunities weren't available to me. So uh, there came a point in a particular television job, you know, the director was just very dismissive and he had been around for a very long time and I just didn't understand why he was given the keys to tell us what to do and direct these shows when I felt like I had a perspective and frankly, I think I could do better. So that motivated me to tell my own stories and, and my first film, Man Up gave me, a, it was like film school. I had acted, I had been on so many sets, I had worked with so many different directors, but I think that was my film school was, you know, I think when you, when you watch someone, you know, operate a stick shift, you're like, oh, that's easy, you put the clutch, blah, blah. But then when you actually go to do it, you don't understand that there's a lot of balance I mean, it, gave, it definitely gave me much more of appreciation for producers and directors after my first film. I really love working in Korea. Like this project right now is my fourth, my first directing project in Korea, but my fourth overall. You know, I've done three projects as an actor in Korea. And I love working in Korea because there's a sense of uh, family. There's a lot of chung, you know, that I feel American productions I wish was there was more of. I tend to find that the people who do this really love what they do, you know, creating and collaborating. So I feel that energy. You would think there's bigger differences between Korean and American productions, but I think when you actually get down to doing, doing it, filmmaking is filmmaking. You know, you still need a gaffer. You still need a cinematographer, you still... So in, that, in, in terms of the workflow, um, I think it's quite similar. I think in terms of maybe roles, who does what, 
It's a slightly different and I think the biggest sort of challenge between co-productions is communication because obviously people are speaking two different languages and obviously there's difference in culture. So there's um, some miscommunication or there's like a uh, oe. <laughs> uh, there's a little bit of uh, that sometimes, but not so much that people can't work things out. And if anything, I think the beautiful thing about you know coming from America is the sharing of culture. Um, I do think that American productions that come to Korea have to understand that we're visitors. And first and foremost, we must respect how things are done here first, and then we can work out a system. The biggest thing I've learned on this production, I think, is, to be honest, is just having more patience. Trying to find a way to work well with others. I just have to be much more open and collaborative. Because storytelling is storytelling. Um, it's just at a bigger scale, there's just more people involved. The best advice I can give is don't wait for people to give you permission. I think it's so cliche and I hear every filmmaker talk about this, but it's true. You know, it's an art form. So like a painter, you have to continually paint. If you don't do it, you cannot get better. And you, if you don't continually practice, when the opportunity actually comes where somebody's like willing to give you money or you think of the great idea, if you don't have the technical skills, and having practiced, then um, you know that opportunity will pass you by. So it's about practice and, and doing it. Short-term short -term goals is just getting through this production and you know in a safe manner through with COVID. Short other short-term goals is is you know there's a film I'd like to make in the summer. Long-term goals is you know, uh, being the conversation for accolades, not because that matters, but it, it, I think as an Asian American, it just gives us more leverage and more sort of influence to be able to make the type of work I think that is important. And my main long-term goals is to continue to bring empathy uh, through story, storytelling to the Asian American community and the Asian community at large, um, and help bring a knowledge and teach people about the humanistic aspects of our culture and, and normalize us. And I think that's, a, that's always like a bigger mission of mine. It's a, the big purpose of why I do what I do. Um, and it does inform all my choices. Yeah, I'd say those are my long-term goals and continue to do that. I mean, I'm still, I'm still learning, you know? I'm still just growing and what I could say is, you know, just like I was talking about the acting is, is what it is that they can offer, but also, you know, bridge the gap. And I, I think it's about telling uniquely Korean stories that make it so specific that it becomes universal. Because I don't think Korean producers or directors or writers should come to America and be like, oh, I want to tell like a, an American story. They can, but I think that like, if Hollywood is, that's maybe not what I would think they would be looking for. Because we have plenty of that. I think it's par partially about understanding the business right now. But you know, for somebody who's just coming from Korea, I think it's, it's like what is the perspective com coming as a Korean producer or director or writer that is unique, that it can expose humanity in a way that they, they understand, but is just new enough, you know, but is palatable. I think it's about under, yeah, I would say it's about understanding the business and what these American buyers are looking for. I think they're attracted to something that's the same but different, always, right? But I think there is a, a spotlight on Korea right now because of, you know, Parasite and all these auteur directors and K-pop, the music and fashion and technology. I think there's a big spotlight on this country. So there's a unique opportunity, I'd say, yeah, here.